All right, good afternoon, my business and communication professionals. This lesson is going to be one about IPOs, which are initial public offering, and the process of how a privately owned company goes from being privately owned to joining the stock market and becoming publicly traded. So this is designed to clear up some of the uh, confusion in between uh, private companies and companies that are traded uh, on one of the indexes on the New York Stock Exchange. For the purposes of this lesson, I have created a fictitious company and I've named it Tasty Tacos Incorporated. This company has been valued by some investment banks at $100,000. Try to keep the numbers simple and precise for you. Now I have a couple different options here if I want to take this on the New York Stock Exchange. I can sell the entire company and just offer $100,000 worth of stock for sale and leave with a check. Or I can sell a portion of the company on the stock market and retain the rest and keep control of the company. So you know, perhaps I wanna sell 40% or 50% of the stock it's important that I keep 50% or more in my possession, and that means I will have ultimate control of the company. Once I control less than 50% of the shares of stock, I no longer have the ability to make the uh, executive decision making uh, for everyone else in the company. I, I have to negotiate with people at that point and vote and that sort of thing. So um, no matter what happens, even if I am totally divested from a company, uh, so let's say I take a, a job on the board of directors when I sell it online. So uh, I don't own any of the company anymore. I sold 100% of it, but I carved out a position for myself on the board of directors, let's say. So now I just get a paycheck. And it was a way of me keeping my foot in the door uh, for having started the company, right? So if I do this, that's perfectly fine. But since I no longer control the company, I am obligated to make decisions on behalf of the investors, and that's called a fiduciary responsibility. And it's just a very complicated sounding term for I'm required to make decisions in your interest. If I made a decision and I lost a bunch of money or I spent a bunch of money in a, a dumb way, as an investor, you would have a right to bring a lawsuit against me for being an idiot with your money. So that's what a fiduciary responsibility is. So now let's take a look at Tasty Tacos and imagine that we wanna sell this on the New York Stock Exchange. So for this example, what I've done is I've decided I only wanna sell 20% of the company. So that means I have $20,000 to sell. So to keep it simple, um, and I, I'll include the uh, Word document or Excel document, I'm detailing some of this with the video in case you wanna uh, watch that along with this. Our initial public offering on day one that's what IPO means, initial public offering, will be 2,000 shares. And if the total has to be $20,000, then that means each share is going to be worth $10. So we have 2,000 shares of Tasty Tacos Incorporated on the market now, and they are trading at $10 a share. So let's say you look at this investment and you say, hey, you know what? I would like to put some of that company in my portfolio. I, they've got great food and I think they've got a good thing going there. So you go out and you buy 50 shares of my company, Tasty Tacos, and the shares are worth $10 each. So that means that your total cost is $500 plus the $7 you'll pay to whoever is handling the transaction as a fee. For practical purposes, your 50 shares at $10 a piece will be worth a total of $500. All right, so now what happens? You own stock, life goes on for the company in a slightly different way, so what? Where does this all come out in the wash? Why do we care about this? Where does the rubber hit the road? All right, here's where it hits the road. Now that I have sold the company to the New York Stock Exchange and all kinds of different investors own it, portions of it, you are one of them, you own 50 shares. Now that that's happened, every quarter of a year, which is every three months, I'm required by law to report my profit publicly. So my profit would be 
however much money I have left after I pay all my bills and I collect all the incoming revenue from my taco sales. Whatever's left is my profit. Now, that profit amount, because my company is owned by investors now, my company can only keep 80% of that profit. Because remember, 20% of the company, we broke off and sold it on Wall Street. So I've got to take 20% of my profit and disperse it among those shares of stock that we sold. So we sold 2,000 shares of stock at $10 a piece. And so now we have to take our quarterly profit and we have to disperse a 20% chunk of it among all the investors who purchased those 2,000 shares equally. We have to distribute it. So let's take a look at the math. Our total revenue for the quarter was $30,000. Our total costs were $22,500. That left us a net profit of $7,500. Not too bad. Now we have to determine what percentage of $7,500 we need to pay out to the shareholders, right? Because 20% of the $7,500 has to go to the shareholders. Now, 20% of $7,500 is $1,500. So that $1,500 will be split among all of the shareholders, including you. You own 50 shares and you didn't do anything at the company. You didn't make tacos. You didn't schedule workers. You didn't, you didn't do anything. You just got a check in the mail for owning a piece of it. That's it. That's pure, unadulterated capitalism. Now, you have 50 shares. We paid 75 cents a share dividend. So you brought in a handsome little profit of $37.50 for doing absolutely nothing other than owning the shares. Hooray, that's the joy of owning stock right there. And that is called a dividend. When a payment is made every quarter, every three months, so it's four times a year, a dividend goes out to everyone who owns a share of stock. Now let's take a look at a different example. In this example, the company has lost money during the quarter. So we had total revenues of $41,000, but our costs were $44,000. So we're actually negative $3,000 for this quarter. So what happens now? The shareholders are obviously, they're not going to get paid any money because we didn't make any money. We can't send them a bill to dig us out of the $3,000. Where, where does that come from? Well, the shareholders are going to pay for it, but you aren't going to have to write a check. They'll save you that trouble. What will happen is every share of stock that is on the market will be devalued slightly in order to accommodate that $3,000 loss. So when the company loses money big time like that, now we have to take 20% of the $3,000 loss and disperse it among the shareholders, just like we did with profit. So that comes out to $600 total that we have to take out of the 2,000 shares or 30 cents per share. So in your case, where you own 50 shares of Tasty Tacos Incorporated and we had a bad quarter, now you lost 30 cents a share. And that means on your 50 shares of Tasty Tacos Incorporated, you lost a total of $9.70. Not terrible. And that means that your initial investment of $500 is now worth $485. So you've, you've lost some money. So that's the way that the stock market works very basically and broadly speaking. I didn't go into any specific or painful detail on terminology. It's not important. What's important for business communication is just that we get the gist of this and that we're able to have conversations and use a little bit of terminology and that you are able to get the gist of this, to understand just broadly what the process is. Uh, the painful specifics will come later in time when you study it and you become interested in it. But for now, we just need to be concerned with the sheer communication of it. So uh, this will be taught very broadly speaking. And if, if I misspeak uh, in a detail because I'm using round numbers or something, uh, feel free to point that out to me. Um, it's happened before. All right, I'm gonna stop here for today. That is the lesson on going from a privately held company to an IPO and a little bit of detail on some of the stocks and the way that the dividends work, both when you earn money and when the stock loses money.